Hey, hey, welcome to another slow MTG box opening. Life has been busy and I haven't had much chance to open any shit. But here I am today, got a couple of special things. Firstly, something came in the mail. You know my love for old school. One day I'll take you guys through my old school deck that I play, but this card came in the mail. Mirror Universe, it's from Legends, and this is the English version. They published Legends in Italian as well. Not as desirable, but I think it's perfectly fine, but I guess everyone wants English. But anyway, Mirror Universe, really cool, old school art by um, Phil Foglio. Uh, his wife, Kaja, F Kaya? Ka Kaya Foglio, also did a lot of artworks for the 9394 series. This is a six color artifact, back when artifacts were brown. And what happens is if you tap, you can sack Mirror Universe during your upkeep and trade your number of life points with your opponent. For example, if you had 2 life points and your opponent had 10, you would now have 10 life points and your opponent would have 2. Effects that prevent or redirect damage may not be used to counter this change of life. So this was traditionally used in control decks, I guess in 9394 as well. You know, if you've got this and you're getting beat down by a weenie deck and you, you want to stabilize, cast, if you get to turn 6 at least, you can... Uh, or at least seven, you can cast this and then swap your life total and then usually your opponents will cry. Anyway, that's kind of cool old school card. It's going in my collection. I play seven point old school as well. I'll take you guys through the format uh, at some point, but it's good fun. But the main event here is Secret Lair. These came today and well, I picked them up from LGS who helped me with them. Extra Life. I've got the foil and the non-foil. So I know some of them have, you know, I think this has been out for over a month now, but I just received them from the stop shops, so why not? I'm just going to take you through them. I also picked this up. Um, Secret Lair Mountain Go. Look at the Secret Lairs. I'm going to compare the two. Can you see that? This is new, improved, reduced packaging Secret Lair. And this is old, bad for environment or worse for environment packaging Secret Lair. So I'm going to open both, one of each, and then we'll we'll see what the differences are. Okay, I'm gonna crack this one open the good old way. I, I, you might have seen some of my videos. I cut through them just to cut through the security tape, um, their hologram. So I'm just gonna do that. Thank you for being a part of Secret Lair. And then you open it up. This is Extra Life Foil Edition. Pull that out. That's a box. I think one thing Wizards could do to further save, you know, is to really even trim this down. It could still be half the size. We don't really need this. You could put the security tape. Let's say you don't even need this, right? I mean, it's kind of cool. It's nice. It's got matte finish, but what are you going to do with this? Recycle it. Could just be a box with uh, security tape on the top and bottom. Like some of those fancy cards um, that you, you know, sports cards. I think they were just a single pack with security tape. Anyway, enough about me. This set was done to raise funds for um, Extra Life. I think it was a foundation that helps people. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm so sorry, I should have looked it up. I think kids in need. Let me just check that up, Extra Life. Anyway, so it was done for a good cause by, by uh, Wizards and also um, other organizations in the gaming industry, I believe. I'll come back to Secret Life in a bit. But anyway, it's kind of cool. I'm going to crack open the packs. There are... Two, four, eight cards in here. So a little bit more than a typical secret there sometimes. Some of them have six, some of them have four. This one's got eight. Oh, it's kind of damaged out of the box. Miscut in a way. Um, okay, so this is the foil series. The regular ones uh, are the same, except it's non-foil, of course. Mm. All right, so we've got Muldrifter. This is an art. Again, the way this worked was they invited kids. Let me just look this up. Secret Lair Life. Um, MTG. Extra Life, sorry. I keep saying Secret Life. I don't know why. Sorry, it's Extra Life. Anyway, Extra Life. Um, they've been partnering Extra Life since 2015. They donated the funds for this. Extra Life is a fundraising event where people from all sorts of gaming spaces come together to support Children's Miracle Network hospitals. So 100% of the proceeds go to hospitals. And they, I think they first started doing it last year where there were a couple of cool cards, Amulet of Vigor, Collected Company, Consecrated Sphinx and, Sphinx and Teferi's Protection. This year we've got something different. It looks really childish, even though this art is done by a professional magic artist, Magali Avelinu, age 41. The cool thing is because, <laughs> you see, they invited a child um, 
this one was done by someone aged five and a quarter, I think. And the person's name is Al Aaliyah, I think. It's tiny. Anyway, same mold drifter. And this was the Charles drawing. And then this is the interpretation of the Charles drawing by a professional artist. Be you, be free, live happily. Love mold drifter. You can evoke it for two and a blue. So if you come in, if you pay the evoke cost, it comes into play, gets the ETB trigger, and then you have to sacrifice it. If you pay the evoke cost. Otherwise, it comes in for four and a blue. So we've got mold drifter in kids version and mold drifter in uh, adult version. This is the money card. Crater Hoof Behemoth. Quite a finisher in some decks in Legacy, like Elves. So you just want to do a big Crater Hoof. And this is by Lars Grant West, age 52. It's got Haste 5-5. Five, five. When Crater Hoof Behemoth enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until the end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. So Elves usually spits out a board of maybe 5, 6, 7, 8 Elves. And then they come up with Crater Hoof through a, cr a Cradle activation. And then it comes down, the whole team swings in, tramples in, and die kills you. Cards damage out of the box, wizards. Not cool. If you can't, can you really? Can you see that? There. Damaged cards. See the lines across the front. It's like scratches or some sort of error in production. Boo. Anyway, this is the Charles version. This is done by Kira, age five and a half, and that's Kira's, and that's Lars's. That's really cool. I love how Lars did that. If you look. Over here, I can't really see it in the foil, but this little dude, I'm going to zoom in here, sitting there as the behemoth comes towards him. Anyway, that's that. So we've got that. Third card is... Ooh, the corners are quite square. Third card is Metalwork Colossus. Uh, this is a cool card. You can... It costs X. This is an artifact. 10-10. Sadly, it's got no evasion to trample. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total mana value of non-creature artifacts you control. You can sack two artifacts and return Metalwork Colossus from your graveyard to your hand. So you want to spit out artifacts like Prophetic Prism and and that, that cantrips and does stuff, and then you cast a really cheap Colossus that's 10-10. But you need to really make it get Flying or Trample to do anything. And of course, this is the Charles version. Um, there you go. Also damaged Wizards. Can you have a look? see here? The lines across the top. Now this one is done by Hian Tran, H6. Alright. I guess I wonder if this could be considered misprinted because if you look here in the corner, it's a little dot there, I guess it's maybe not really misprinted, but damaged, maybe like a print dot in the corner, maybe it comes from a sheet. Don't know. Um if you turn at the back, I saw the same issue here. There's a little it's like the guidelines of the marking, it's really way off center. Just like my camera's off. <laughs> anyway, so there we go. And then the bonus card is really cool. It's all a fixed set of bonus cards in this one. I'll pull it out and then we can open it and review it. It's, oh, there might be two versions in here as well. Pa -pa! It's Questing Feldegriff. Uh, obviously, the first Feldegriff came out in Alliances. Uh, and that was a reserve list card, so you're not going to see that in, in being reprinted anytime soon. Wizards, if you're listening, we're reserve lists. Woo! People, players need jewels and other cool cards. When Mox Diamond is a $1,000 card or a $900 card, that's problematic. Anyway, I'm going to show you the two questing feldegriffs in here. It's a foil, of course. I think even the non-foil ones come in foil. So it's uh, one green, white, and blue. It's kind of a group hug commander. It's 4-4. Four, four. And uh, it's by Dimitri Bermak, age 39. So it comes in 4-4. Four, four. You can pay green. Questing feldegriff gets plus one, plus one at the end of turn. Target opponent creates a 1-1 one, one green hippo creature token. And blue, white questing Felgriff gains protection for black and red until end of turn. Target opponent gains two life. So you just give people stuff in a group hug uh, deck in EDH. And then blue questing Felgriff gains flying in the end of turn. Target opponent may draw a card. There we go. And then the Charles version here. Nice. It's by Mark Rosewater. Oh, wait. Sorry. Mark, are you a child? Maybe you're a man child. My, Marrow. Uh, Everyone knows Maro from uh, Wizards. He's been there forever, part of the furniture, but really insightful. If you haven't listened to his podcast about set design, worth a listen. Anyway, he, he's age 53 and three quarters, and he drew a version that was done here. So this is not bad. This is kind of cool. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. 
um, two sets will give you a full play set of uh, Crater Hoof Behemoths. So that is pretty cool because I think prior to this, Crater Hoof is a mythic in uh, Jumpstart and a few other sets, and it was pushing, what, 50, 60 bucks. So I'm glad it's a much needed reprint. Okay, I'm not going to open the um, the non-foil one. I'm just going to set that aside because it's more of the same uh, except it's non-foil. I'm going to open this one. You might have seen this one. It's Mountain Go. So again, like the old cards, uh, you can. there's no security thing. So Wizards started putting security because you could slip a blade through and, and cut this open here. If you see here, and then reseal it back. Um, so I could show you that. Or oh, I, I just slotted some cards I picked up from the shop in there. Anyway, that's not part of the deal. This is a disorganized <laughs> video. I just got my camera on and I should be more prepared. I think I might have shown it to you guys before. So what happens is if you want to open it without and reseal it, I think you can just slot a blade through this like this and then get through psh, over here. By the way, I'm just going to tear it the good old way with the test strip here. Um, opening it up. This is how wizards have saved on packaging. So this is the old box, which is ginormous. Lots of paper, paper, paper. I'm gonna recycle all that. Got this extra wrapping on the outside, uh, which they've done away with as well. So that can be recycled too. It's tissue. And then you've got this big box. I mean, the only benefit of the old box is that this actually stores cards and it's quite, quite nice. Uh, and it's got Mountain Go by the side. And I think it, how does it work? It should open up like this. Oh, it's, it's a, uh, I guess I can, no idea. I guess it's some sort of seal there. There we go, damage the box, that's for sure. Anyway, so this is how it used to be. Opens up, and this set is full of lightning bolts, and there's a secret layer card, uh, extra bonus card at the end, and there's lots of packaging there, like this plastic, 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 and paper, paper, paper. And then you take that out, these are not sealed in any shrink. And then you have the cards. So this set is pretty much just, I just paid lots of money for four bolts. Um, iconic card, lightning bolt. So it comes in foil treatment only. Uh, Noah Bradley art, sadly it's been cancelled. Go read about it. This one is cool. It's Bridget Roca. Bear being hit by a lightning bolt. Uh, she created some art for, I think, Innistrad as well. And this is Lightning Bolt by Robbie Trevino. Um, dragon being hit by Lightning Bolt. And then the last one is Alexis Zirret. A guy, a wizard, standing on top of the mountain, getting hit by a Lightning Bolt. This is cool. Might go in my burn deck. I'm gonna throw that away, recycle it. And then the last one here, how do I get this out? So you can actually pull this out. There we go. This can be used for box storage. It kind of fits cards nicely, if you see here. If you have sleeved cards or non-sleeved, can hold a couple hundred cards. Uh, good for shipping as well. So, yeah, there you go. Um, at least there's some use for that. I'll put that aside. And I think these are all fixed. It's a planeswalker, a stained glass planeswalker. Pretty sure it is. Hold on, I don't want to damage it. Pulling it out. Yeah! Pretty sure it's Sarkin. Oh no, Rel! Storm Conduit. So here we go. Stained glass planeswalker from... Uh, what set was that? The one with all the uncommon planeswalkers. Oh my god, my memory's so terrible. First one in the comments, come on, let's go. Anyway, uh, War of the Spark, that's the one. I got it myself. So, oh shit, it's damaged out of the pack. Look at that, bent. Can you see that? I just, oh my god, wizards, come on, man. I did not bend that. I just pulled it out this way. Anyway, there we go. Thanks, Wizards. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining for the for the opening. I've got something else that I'll open soon, but uh, I thought this was fun. Do a cool little small opening. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye.